Hello, Silver fans. This is T, and you're in the place to be for Silver Education, Acquisition, and Entertainment. Hey, the place to be is my kitchen. This is my kitchen table, and I am joined uh, by a dear friend here, and uh, I'm going to introduce him. Uh, his name is G. We won't reveal his, uh, his real name, uh, and he's going to stay anonymous and not be shown on camera. Uh, just like me for, for the same reason. So, Gene, tell me a little bit why uh, you're here at my kitchen table and what you brought. Well, T, you and I were talking um, a couple of weeks ago. Yeah, we were hanging out at a party. We were, we were. And we just started talking about various collections and such. And we talked about baseball cards. Mm -hmm. And then we got on the subject of coins and that kind of thing. And I say, well, I've got some coins uh -huh. that um, my mom had collected over the years when she was much younger and throughout her adult life and so um, I've got some of those coins I've, mm -hmm. I've had them for uh, for the last few years mm -hmm. and when I inherited them and and so um, I brought them here to look at today now this was what you're about to show the audience and matter of fact if you want to pass that bag over here uh, let's see we'll, we'll take these out Ooh, pretty heavy <laughs> we'll take these out in just a moment and we'll talk about them individually uh, but um, is this the entire collection that she had? That's, that is one-fourth of the collection. So oh, okay. I have uh, three other siblings, and uh -huh. uh, we took the collection and split it in fours, and this is my part of it. Now, are you a coin collector yourself, or are your siblings coin collectors, just out of curiosity? None of us are coin collectors. Oh, so out of curiosity, how did you and your siblings divide up? the uh, the coins in the collection so it was it, that's that's a good question you know <laughs> so about two years ago um we sat uh, i sat down with my mother and she says you know i've got all these coins i don't know what i'm ever going to do with these uh -huh. she says but I, I i want i want you guys to have them ah. so what i did was i set out a mat on the on the kitchen floor uh -huh. i dumped all the coins there <laughs> and i just took them and uh so i took some some quarters and i just split them in four one quarter for you one foot yeah and so methodically and, 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 yeah methodically in fourths uh -huh. and uh and like i said this is how this is how this is what i got out of uh -huh. this and so my my siblings have very very similar collections to this if okay. not the same you know okay cool yeah uh, well, I'm dying to see uh, what's in here uh, out of curiosity, but also to help you. If I, you know, I am uh, a silver stacker. I, uh, you know, uh, accumulate silver and gold, a little bit of platinum, precious metals, and I, I dabble when it comes to coin collecting. I don't want you to think, gee, that I, I am a like a, a numismatist who is an expert in coins. I'm learning. I actually have some friends who are numismatists and I attend a couple of coin clubs. And I'm, it's really fun to learn uh, about uh, coins and numismatics, but uh, I'm gonna give you my, uh, like kind of like a shoemaker's <laughs> uh, perspective. Okay. Uh, and But if I recognize anything that you might have that's like super valuable, I'll let you know. And I'll, I'll help ed keep, provide whatever education I can from me to you so that you're more educated on what okay. you have and then uh, perhaps know what you're doing. Very good. Uh, is this something that you plan on selling or just holding on to? Or You know, T, I, I, I have not decided that. I really don't know. Uh -huh. um, again, I, I don't know if it's anything that, um, yeah, I would want to hold on to and then pass down to my children yeah. or if it's something that would be some, uh, something I would be looking at, at getting into. So I'm undecided. Uh -huh. um, but you know, T, I have a question for you. Sure. You use the term, and I've watched uh, numerous videos of yours. Mm -hmm. You use the term a silver stacker. What is a silver stacker, T? <laughs> uh, basically, someone who accumulates silver uh, just because it's a savings account to me. Uh, some people have this notion that you know they can buy silver or gold, and all of a sudden the the price of those uh, you know commodities are going to go up and up and up and make them rich. Uh, for me, it's a little different. You know, I accumulate silver and a little bit of gold uh, just because it's a savings account to me. Uh, throughout my life, and gosh, we've known each other for probably 30 years, man. Yeah. Uh, I've never been like a great saver. You know, I put some money in an envelope to save up, and before you know it, something comes along, sure. and there it goes. Sure. Uh, but over the last uh, couple of years of serious silver stacking and uh, you know, gold accumulation, I've been able to manage to accumulate this and just hold on to it. 
and my goal is to at least get to retirement with it and you know god willing pass them down to my children uh, but you know really collect a little bit of a, a nest egg so okay. that's, that's what silver stacking is and I honestly, I, we're such good buddies that I felt comfortable telling you about it at that sure. party or hanging sure, out, sure. but I haven't even told many people at all. I, sure. I don't put it out on my personal Facebook. Okay. Uh, I've told my parents and my sibling or my brother uh, and uh, my cousin and, you know, people I can trust sure. w- with, uh, you know. Uh, well, but Thank I, you for I, sharing that. Oh, no problem, thank you for man. Sharing that I, with I don't put it out there to sure. everybody. And so, uh, yeah, my pleasure. Um, so hey, let's get into it, man. Uh, sure. I know people are dying to see what's in here. Sure. And is, is this the only bag you brought? This or? is the only bag I brought. Okay. Yes. This is cool. Let's, see. See. let's yeah, just take off sure. for a start. Right ahead. Uh, let's see. What so we these are these are quarters. Okay. okay? These are just uh, U.S. quarters, and and you see if you see on the other side, it's got a date there. Uh-huh. What is that? 20, uh, 2003. 2003. So I, I want to say that. Were, were there state quarters that were yeah, that yeah. came out? These are those state quarters, and uh, you know these state quarters, um, they cause a lot of people to start coin collecting again. Uh, and so every state has a quarter. So uh, what is this one? This one is Maine, and you see the lighthouse there. And every state has their uh, you know their their design that is indicative of uh, you know what their state is known for and so this happens to be maine that would make sense uh. and so i do i do remember that around that time my mother was uh uh she'd review her coins and put those aside so this is part of that collection that she did that well into her adult life you know she must have been in her 70s around mm-hmm. that time that she started well it's, it's they were educational as well because like sure. arkansas has a diamond on it who would have thunk of arkansas when it comes to diamonds <laughs> yeah. but you know the downside is they're not really worth much sure. uh but uh, more than 25 cents to be honest but uh the the upside is that for uh you know millions of people around the nation uh, they rekindled an interest in coin collecting sure 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 uh, let's see what else we have in here. Let's see more of the same. Uh huh. I think these are kind of similar. The same, quite about the same. Okay. Yeah. Oh, there's a Sacagawea. I remember yes. uh, that uh, coin and people getting excited about it when it first came out, <laughs> and then. Uh, for whatever reason, it just didn't gain a ton of popularity. I remember that. You know, people d- didn't want to p- carry around twelve dollars worth of heavy coins in their pockets. You know. I think uh, the only time I see those in circulation is at a, a, a toll booth. I remember putting <laughs> a twenty dollar bill in a toll booth and getting back nineteen or, or maybe fifteen sac- sacachuillas. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so let's see what else we got in here. A roll of Sacagawea. Oh, yeah, a roll okay. of Sacagawea. So, <laughs> if maybe vending, some vending machines might still take these. Yeah. <laughs> and let's see what else you got here, man. Uh, Centennial. Centennials, more centen. Okay. Ten dollars and quarters. Let's see. Open one of the sides of that and see what you got. All right. Let's see what we got here. Uh, yeah. This is. Those uh, old quarters. Okay. I don't want to well, mess up the whole thing, but. I, I could tell just by looking, uh, you know, those aren't like anything sure. of like sure. great value. Sure, sure, sure. Uh, but, you know, something to have. And let's see here. Oh, wait All a right. minute. This right here, my friend. Whoa. Yes. Whoa, wait a minute. Here. <laughs> <laughs> now, now you're onto something, buddy. All right, so <laughs> this is uh, Benjamin Franklin, half dollar, 1954. And uh, commonly called a Benji, okay. and that's you know with us people on YouTube or uh, you know people who are into uh, stacking call this one of my favorites personally. Uh, but on the side, you could see that unlike these quarters, where you could see that that copper color, yes, you don't see that here. That's because this is ninety percent silver. Okay, and so. Uh, let me throw out some terms for you. Uh, junk silver, constitutional silver, 90% silver, all the same thing. Uh, some people get offended uh, when you call it uh, junk silver. But if you would go, go to a coin shop or call a coin shop and say, hey, I've got some junk silver, they would know exactly what you're talking about. Okay. So 
this piece right here, and just so you know, a dollar forty worth of junk silver. So at two half dollars and four dimes, that's basically a troy ounce of silver. Uh, right now, a troy ounce of silver is going somewhere uh, just a little bit over twenty dollars in spot price. But this stuff has become so popular that if you go to a coin shop and you ask to buy junk silver or constitutional silver, uh, they would charge you something quite a bit higher than the silver spot price, okay. like the going rate of silver throughout the world, uh, because it uh, has a premium attached to it. It didn't used to have much of a premium or any premium at all, but now it does because of supply and demand. A lot of people want this uh, to add to their stack, uh, their collection, uh, or, or you know their 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 savings, and so sure. this this is a good one. And I'm just curious. Yep, here we go. You've got a whole bunch of junk silver here. 1943 Washington Quarter. It's got a little wear and tear on mm -hmm. it, and it's probably one of the reasons that people back in the day called it junk silver. Oh, this is worn out, and it's yep, been yep. in people's pockets, and God knows what was paid <laughs> for with this, whether it was a loaf of bread back in the day or whatever. Right. It was passed from person to person, and, and it got worn out, and that's probably why it was called junk silver. But listen, that sounds oh, yeah. different. I like that sound. That sounds different <laughs> than this right here, these two quarters. Yes. And yeah. those of us yeah. who are silver bugs uh, hear that sound, and it's just music to our ears. Now, the cutoff date for uh, these being made of 90% silver is 1964. 64. That's the last year uh, our dimes, quarters, half dollars uh, were made out of 90% uh, silver. 1965 okay. and beyond, it is... Uh, it was, uh, they, they, they converted to like 40% silver for a okay. while, and then that faded away and it became basically no silver at all. And the, the, these right here that have no silver content, mm -hmm. those are called plaid, uh, plaid, uh, you know, coins. Uh, the, oh, here you go, more 90%, more junk silver. Uh, this is a uh, mercury dime here, and um, this is uh, not really a depiction of mercury, but it looks so similar to mercury that everybody started calling it a mercury dime back in the day. Happens to be my favorite, uh, you know, junk silver or 90% silver coin. Uh, 14 of these add up to a troy ounce of silver. Okay. T, so that's, you said, uh, what, what, what kind of dime was this? A mercury, mercury dime? Mercury dime, mm -hmm. okay. Uh, this is uh, another oh, this, okay, this. Uh, dime. That is 90% silver. And there you go. And obviously not a mercury dime. Sure. Uh, it's, uh, this is, happens to be a depiction of Roosevelt. So these are commonly called in coin shops and by us guys on YouTube uh, as Rosies. Rosies. Uh -huh. <laughs> Man. So another mercury dime. And uh, here you go. And so I kind of wonder if your mom just kind of got these and changed over the years. And Yeah. Uh, so I remember growing up, um, she had a little piggy bank, uh -huh. ceramic piggy bank that she kept in the kitchen on one of the shelves there. Mm -hmm. And that always stayed there. We never, and every once in a while, maybe during a snowstorm when we were kids and couldn't go to school, uh -huh. pull that out and look at it. Oh, these are great. Put them back in, put them up there uh -huh. over the course of all of our, uh, our, our, our childhood. Yeah, and some of these, uh, you know, will have less wear and tear on them. Some of them mm -hmm. will have more. But, uh, man, this is nice. I hope when you divide it up, you didn't give all your siblings the clad ones and keep the silver. You know, T, it's funny because I, I just, when, when I dumped those out and I divided them into, into fourths there, I just, one for you, one for me, one for yeah, I wasn't uh, even looking at the yeah, coin itself yeah. other than the, the, the equal, you know, equal coins, equal, mm -hmm. equal dimes, equal uh, quarters, etc. cetera. Mm -hmm. Dollars. Let's see. This is uh, 64, 90% silver, beautiful. And oh, let's see, all right, here is a Walking Liberty half dollar. Uh, you know, the same uh, that we talked about for that Benji, uh, you know, it's a half dollar, so. Uh, this is a famous design. Uh, uh, actually, this design on the front, the obverse of the coin is called the front, the front is called the obverse, is so famous that it's been used in other coinage uh, throughout mm. the years. And uh, this one, 
Yeah, 64. 64. One thing also to be aware of is that some of these uh, that are in you know halfway decent shape and have mm -hmm. that silver content, even even some of them that are in worn out shape, might be valuable for their uh, not only their silver content but coin collector value. Okay. It all depends on uh, the mintages, and uh, you know if uh, it's kind of like baseball cards. Sure. Uh, where you know you get all <laughs> you would get a pack after pack after pack of common cards, and then back in the day you'd get a Tony Gwynn or you know you <laughs> name a Ryan Sandberg yes. or you know somebody good, and that's the one that's worth money and uh, the the one that's prized. Same thing with coins in the respect that the lower the mintage of a particular coin, uh, the more valuable it is. So if you're putting together a set of all the, say, for example, Walking Liberty half dollars, okay. and you know, you've got a bunch of common ones, uh, and you fill up that book. Oh, here is a, uh, looks like an old uh, Barbara uh, nickel here. Um, and uh, you fill up that book and you realize, oh, wait a minute, I'm missing a particular one. It's one most likely with a lower mintage. Mm, and so okay. you go to a coin shop and you say, hey, or eBay or wherever, and you're looking for this one of the lower mintage. Obviously, it's going to cost a lot more. And some of the coins throughout the years were struck in uh, different um, mints and uh, their mintage numbers were lower than others and you might have uh, something in here that has collector value so before you leave i'm going to give you a book called uh, the red book okay and what you can do is you can look up the, the year and i'll show you on the uh, there's also a, a mint mark and you can look up the year and the mint mark and see if it is of uh, low mintage year and if it is uh, you might be in the money. And, okay. Uh, okay. Uh, sure. Good spot. I'd love to look at that. A good spot to determine that would be uh, if you would go to like eBay for the heck of it and just kind of realize, hey, that is one with very low mintage. The prices on there uh, would, I'm pretty sure, would surprise you because wow, uh, some of the coin collectors I know. Uh, will spend a thousand dollars on a penny or a thousand dollars on a dime that you might have in here. Wow, how about uh, that? Yeah, yeah, you've got an interesting mixture in here. All this silver stuff here, uh, I mean, it adds up, buddy. What is sure. this? I mean, some kind of what was this dollar? I don't remember this one. Grant on it. Do you remember this? I, I, <laughs> I don't. Probably something that Mint experimented with. And uh, and it was a flop. So yeah, let's see. We got some. Uh, I think those may be more quarters or, or oh, some yeah. of the first ones we looked at the state the state ones. Yeah, yes. those are uh, more Same. state quarters. More state quarters. Yeah. Oops. Nineteen ninety nine. Okay. Okay. And then let's get that out of the way. And yeah, this is other. Uh, more modern stuff. And so this right here, mm -hmm. gee, I would uh, definitely search through and for those dates that we talked about. Because I see sure. this, I'm just looking through this bag here, I see a whole mixture of uh, silver coinage, 90%, and clad. And uh, just go by that rule of thumb, uh, 64 and earlier, you've got silver there. Now, T, I don't know if you you saw this one or you. I, I don't, oh yeah, or, yeah. This is which, which an is old that? quarter. Uh, this is uh, Standing Liberty. A, okay, Standing. Yep. And that was look at beautiful eagle design. This one was such a beautiful uh, eagle yeah. design that uh, a lot of uh, companies that make silver rounds mm -hmm. have copied that same design. And so uh, some of these uh, like. Are, are are so old and worn mm -hmm. and like the dates have run worn off of them over yes, the years yes uh and you might need to use like a magnifying glass sure. to see if you can make out any date wow. and uh yeah you've got a, a nice collection here and i'll tell you what 
these quarters. They just keep adding up and adding up and adding up. And before you know it, uh, you, you know, you've got a decent amount of uh, face value. Uh, right now at the coin shops that I've been going to, uh, $1 face value has been going for like $20. Okay. So every one, so every one of these four quarters, guys are walking into coin shops all over the nation and paying like eighteen fifty, nineteen, nineteen fifty, wow. or twenty dollars for these quarters, and it all depends on like the the, the spot price of silver at the time. The price okay. fluctuates, uh, you know, by the minute, by the second yes. on the market. And so, if you would just uh, look at um, a silver spot price, on okay. Google it. I use a site called Kitco, and you could see okay, it's twenty two or silver spot price is. On any particular day, you'll get an idea of what one ounce of silver would go okay. for. But so that's a that's a site I would visit, like like checking the Nasdaq and what daily. Huh? Exactly. Okay. Yeah, okay. And you could check the silver price as it fluctuates. And are there are there things in our economy that affect that price, or how does that? Yeah, there's all kinds of things. Uh, a lot of it is geopolitical. Uh, some of it is supply and demand. Uh, with a lot of people, uh, and myself included, think that silver demand in the years to come is going to increase uh, because uh, we're, the whole world is going green and okay. this stuff right here sure. is used in uh, green technologies mm. uh, such as uh, solar panels, electric cars. I would venture to bet that you know that you and I will both be driving electric vehicles in 10, 20 years from now. Sure. Uh, and so um, you know the gas guzzlers of today will be gone. Mm -hmm. And the new cars that are electric uh, are use a considerable amount of silver. Wow. It's the, the most reflective element on the planet. And the conductivity with electricity is extremely good as well. Did not so, know that. Yeah, wow. there's, there's a lot of reasons that silver will be used for industrial purposes in the years to come. Uh, you know, it's kind of gotten gone uh, out of fashion to wear silver jewelry and things like that. But the industrial uses are, uh, you know, really... It has a lot of potential. Okay. Mm -hmm. Great. Well, thanks Thank for you. showing me your collection, man. Thank I really you. appreciate Thank it. Thank you. No, thanks for looking at this. Um, again, you know, it's been years since I've even opened this or looked at it and I had it put away. And, and after our discussion there, I, you know, uh, I said, well, take a look at it and see what I've got. Yeah. So, thanks. Uh, I would uh, say I would definitely separate the silver from the other stuff. Sure, sure, sure. And, uh, yeah, I don't know, you know. You've got a couple kids, and uh, sure. you know if you can, sure. you might want to you know follow uh, my strategy of just holding this as long as you can. I can. Sure. But if the price goes up to the point where you, and there's something that you need or want, you've got a nice little you know collection here, and whatever else yeah, is well, over in sure. there um, that could add up to something. I, I I appreciate that. Thank you. Yeah, I definitely will. Uh, you know, again, I think I'm going to hold on to this for a while and. Yeah. And, and see where see where it goes. I mean, we've held on for to it, this for that long anyway, <laughs> yeah. right? Why not? But um, no, thank you for that, uh, T. And and you know what? Before uh, before we close it up here, you know what we talked a little earlier about. Um, uh, also at that same party when we talked about um, coins, uh -huh. we also talked about baseball cards. Oh yeah. <laughs> and so uh, you know, I think we shared that when we were younger, we collected cards, and I was I was one of those too. And, my brother and I would trade. We would spend entire summers trading cards. Oh yeah. And uh, and with the other kids on our block, and so uh, we, we built a collection up to about five thousand cards. Wow. You know, and okay. and uh, you know we would collect them by the pack, uh -huh. and like you said earlier. I used to do the same thing man. until until we it created entire collections, yeah. and then on to the next. You know, and then trading and a lot of trading and doubles kind of. Throw away the doubles, or, or you know, put them on our bikes to make that sound, you know, yeah. like. You, <laughs> but um, I'd say back in yeah. the day, the cards used to cost thirty-five cents, and your mom would give you a dollar to buy a hot dog <laughs> after a baseball game, yeah. and then I would always have this conundrum: and do I buy just a hot dog and a pack of cards? And then just drink water out of the fountain and sacrifice by not buying a Pepsi. Yeah. <laughs> and more often than not, I would just get the hot dog and, and, a, and a cup for some water and I would get my pack of cards. You know? <laughs> well, you know, I, and I, I bring this up because um, I have a little something for you today to uh -oh. before, uh, before we wrap it up here. So I know that, T, I don't know if your fans know this, but you are a, an avid uh, 
Chicago Cubs fan. Oh, man. And I know Jose Cardinal, who played uh-huh. for the Cubs, recently yeah. got inducted into the Cubs Hall of Fame. Am I right? Yeah, he okay, sure did. And so, uh, Look several, at that hair sticking out. Yeah. <laughs> so several years ago, when I went to see my beloved Chicago White Sox uh-huh. play the New York Yankees <laughs> at... Uh, at, uh, at that time, Comiskey Park, uh-huh. Jose Cardinal was the uh, first base coach for the Yankees. Oh, wow. So I took my card, and uh-huh. he gladly signed it for me. And um, that's cool. I, man. I'd like to give that to you, T, for uh, you know for taking time to look at my things well, today. Thank and, you, brother. I appreciate that, man. Yes, yes, you're, really you're very nice welcome. You. Thank this, you. Uh, and... This will be a cherished uh, part of my collection. <laughs> yeah. And one of these days, maybe I should show my baseball card collection on uh, on my channel. Uh, I and uh, maybe people, some people might enjoy that. You never know. But thanks, man. You're welcome. And uh, to add to that, you can have uh, here's a here's a Bill Buckner. Oh, uh, that was a that was a giveaway, oh of course, at Wrigley gosh. Field at a time when I went to a game there back yeah. in 2002. It says there. So yeah, uh, Bill Buckner, of course. He had uh, some good years with the Cubs. He did. He did. He's and good. then and then I also have an unopened. 1989 oh Topps baseball card pack. Uh, I don't know what's in there. Um, Holy smokes. But I, I do know the original uh, stick of gum is in there. I don't know how good that would be in today. but <laughs> You know what? Uh, but. Yeah. It might be a choking hazard. That's right. This is for me. Yes, it is. Oh, thanks, yes, man. Yes, it is, T. Uh, so, so what do you, should I open it? Or what? Well, let's see what's in there. Why yeah, not? Why heck? not? Wow, the old we might, we this might. Is, feels waxy. Yeah. My kids today don't know about this. No. They're called wax packs. And it really is fit, waxy, yes, and yeah. as opposed to the the stuff that they use now. And uh, oh my gosh! Broken into several look, pieces. Look at that gum. <laughs> oh jeez. Oh gosh! All right, let's see who we got here. A Thirty-three-year-old right. stick cool of gum. Is this? Uh, let's see. Let's put this like this. And uh, man, some of these names. Mike, see, Mike Moore. Moore. Oh, Mike oh. Schmidt. Yeah, good one, buddy. Cub, Cub killer. <laughs> yeah, Cub killer. But you know what I liked about him? Yeah. Uh, he would crack a home run, and he wouldn't jump up and down. He wouldn't flip back. Run the bases. He'd run the bases. That's my that's yeah. my business, man. That's, that's right. what I'm supposed that's to do. Right. I just hit a home run, and I'm going to jog Take around the bases. And, like, yeah. That's what I was supposed to do. Yep. Oh, man, that's a good one. Dave, Dave Anderson. Anderson. Dodgers. Uh, Dodgers. Charlie yeah. Huff, the old knuckleballer. knuckleballer. right? I saw him play at, uh, well, I think it was the old Comiskey Park okay. back in the day. Yeah. And, man, I, I was watching him throw that ball. And I was thinking, man, I could hit this guy. He throws so slow, and all of the big stars were striking out I and think, getting pissed off and I, frustrated. I, I, oh, Tim Belcher. Tim Belcher, right? rated Tim rookie Belcher. back in the day. Bobby, Bobby Meacham. Meacham. Man, Yankee. oh, man. David, David Wells, oh, he was good. Yeah. He had some good years. Andy Van Slyke Slyke, was good. Yeah. A catcher, I believe, right? I wonder if I fill this out, I could get some <laughs> <laughs> spring fever baseball. <laughs> and Frank DePino. Oh, Frank DePino. I mean, How long he may did he been last a... with the Cubs? He was for a few years. Craig, Craig Worthington. Worthington. Floyd. Floyd Yeomans. 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 Uh, Vince oh, Coleman. Oh, good great, player. Great base stealer, right? Yeah. Was... And another Cub killer. Uh, mm-hmm. is, you know, constantly playing against him with the Cardinals are Mike, Mike McFarland. McFarland. Okay. And let's see, Trevor, Trevor Wilson. Wilson. Carlton. Oh Fitt. my God! You know what? You you got to take this one back because I know you are a big Carlton <laughs> Fisk fan, and that's your guy. All right. You met Carlton my Fisk. God. Yes, I did. Yes, I did. Well, I'll be darned, man. Yeah. Take a look at this, Mike Schmidt. Yeah. His stats were look at that. All those years with one team. You know, that's that? another uncommon yep. thing. Yep. And uh, yeah, he, he was... belted a lot of homers, man. It sure was good. Well, hey, man, it was fun hanging out with you on a Saturday night and Thank talking. Thank you, T. Uh, Thank you, T. Uh, coins I, and cards. And yeah, I, coins and cards. We'll have to do this again. And I'll tell you what, after I give you that book, if you look through this and you find any good dates, let me know. We'll give a follow-up for the Sounds viewers. Sounds good. Sounds good, T. I, I really appreciate this, and uh, and thank you for your time. And oh, uh, my pleasure, man. Yeah, I've enjoyed this. All right, buddy. All right. All right, everybody, I'm going to sign out with my uh, usual uh, sign-off. Thanks for watching. Two. <laughs>